Hello, my name is Ann Court, and this is a day in the life of a scientist for Indiana University's Science Fest. I am a paleontology PhD student here at IU, and although most of my day right now is video calls and writing papers, I do have a really cool project I get to work on that I wanted to show you for this video. Um, so I do a lot of virtual paleontology, working on with computers with 3D scans of fossils that lets us take complex measurements and even reconstruct fossils in ways that would be difficult or impossible outside of virtual space. Um, in particular, I'm working on an animal called Patriophilus. This is a 3D print of its skull at half size, so it would have been about that long in life. Um, a carnivorous mammal from about 45 million years ago. IU has a great paleontology collection, but the fossil I'm working on is actually from the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh. Normally I would work in the paleontology collections, but right now it's easier just to keep it in my office. It may not look like much, but there's actually a lot of really important clues to how Patriophilus would have moved and lived in these fossils, which is what I'm interested in. So I'm going to show you the bone I'm most excited about, which is the ulna. Um, and the reason I'm excited about this is because the other Patriophilus fossil I looked at didn't have the ulna. So basically what an ulna is, it's part of your upper arm, so your forearm, and it makes up the elbow joint. So this right here is the end of my ulna, equivalent to this part. And that's kind of where you're feeling if you ever hit your funny bone, that's what you're feeling. So what I have from the ulna in this patriophilus is part of, I believe, the right ulna, the top part of it. And then I actually have almost a complete left one. So I figured out that these two pieces go together like this. But you can see I'm missing a big part out of the chunk of the back. This is kind of like the, the top part that we see here. And then this piece fits onto the bottom. So now I know what the whole length of the ulna for this animal was, which is honestly relatively short given it was about the size of a, a cougar. Um, and I know that it had a really long olenochrome process, which is the part where the elbow attaches, relative to the relatively short one that we have. So that tells me it would have had really powerful muscles attaching um, right there. But what's really cool is since I've got this complete part of the right and the length uh, fragments from the left, I can actually use 3D scans to reconstruct what a complete ulna from Patriophilus would have looked like. So first I've got to scan all of these fossils that I'm interested in reconstructing. Uh, here you're watching a time lapse of the ulna on my 3D scanner and it can tilt and spin and shoot lasers at the object until it has a full 360 degree scan of uh, the ulna in three dimensions. I usually would have to repeat this process a couple more times to cover the sides that are facing downwards and wouldn't be caught by the lasers, and then I can merge those scans with the scanning software. Now that I've got everything scanned, I can use this software called Blender to put all the pieces together. Uh, so believe it or not, this was actually made for making things like 3D animated movies, think your Pixar's Toy Stories and Frozen's, that kind of thing. Um, but it's actually really handy for editing and manipulating any sort of virtual 3D object, including the scans that I made. So first I will import all of the um, scans of all known fragments that I want to put together. And then you can see what I've started to do is reposition these fragments so that they're aligned how I know they fit together in real life. I, I wouldn't really be able to figure out how they align if I didn't actually have the physical object, so I'm doing it based on that. So now I'll skip to where I've got all of these fragments aligned, including the right ulna um, aligned over the left ulna. You can see it kind of moving back and forth there. Basically what I did was I mirrored it, and then I got it to overlap as much as possible uh, with that upper left ulna, because that way I can fill in the back part of the left ulna that I'm missing. 
And then I want to join all three of these segments together so they're all part of the same object. And I'm going to start joining up the uh, segments together. So first I have to delete the end parts of these different sections. And then I can start bridging between the sections to make this one cohesive object. Once I bridge the gap all the way around, all I have to do is fill in all those little holes. Uh, and then there's a nice little smooth tool I use to smooth out the edges around that area where I joined the two meshes together. And there you have it. We have completed reconstructing the ulna from Patriophilus. So that's just one way we can learn more about fossils using 3D scanning. Um, oftentimes when we think of paleontology, we picture people out in the field, and that is really important and really fun. But there's also a lot of cool stuff going on behind the scenes in places like museums. Um, and if you have a young student who is interested in getting to look at fossils themselves, a lot of researchers have actually put 3D scans online. Um, the one I recommend is called Morphosource. It is primarily for researchers, and it's mostly biologists, but there's definitely paleontology fossils on there. Um, and you can just go and download 3D scans or look at them in the online viewer. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, it's really cool. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed.